Continuing our reading in Abraham Hannibal and the Battle for the Throne by Francis Summers Cox. Today is chapter 9, Escape, and the date of the story is July to August 1706. But it turned out to not be quite as simple as that. The Sultan, who had never noticed Abraham in his life, decided, now that someone else was interested in him, that he didn't want to let this unusual young slave go. And Abraham's friend Orhan, in the palace offices, explained to him that although the Sultan and all the Turks were being very polite and welcoming to Peter Tolstoy and the Russians, it was only because they had to be. A few years before, Tsar Peter had captured a Turkish city on the Russian side of the Black Sea and defeated the Turks, unheard of for the Russians to win a victory. There was peace now, of a kind, but relations between the Tsar and the Sultan were what you might call stiff. The Sultan was in no mood to do friendly favors to his former enemy, so no permission for Abraham to leave, and there was no way of leaving this great walled palace unless you were supposed to. That was the end of it. At least, it would have been the end of it, except that a few weeks later Abraham had an idea. He caught the chief black slave as he was strolling in the courtyard one evening and greeted him, his, as usual, in their own language. Uh, greetings, how goes it with my lord? Uh, greetings, my boy. Ah, uh, most gracious lord, I have a very, very great favor to ask, a very, very great favor. Abraham lowered his voice, mumbling up into the chief black slave's ear. Is there a way you can help me to escape from the palace? The Russians wish to take me to their country, and I wish to go. They've asked the Sultan, and he said no. The chief black slave was very doubtful, very unwilling. I am a very powerful man, Abraham, but if the Sultan should discover that I have gone against his wishes... He shook his head and drew one forefinger silently across his throat. But in the end, he agreed to try. And there is a small secret gate that leads from the garden of the Forbidden Palace, directly through the wall to the sea. I will arrange for a little boat to collect you there one night. But that means... But that means I'll, 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 I'll have to go inside the, the Forbidden Palace? Stammered Abraham, shocked. He thought of the hundreds of mysterious slave girls hidden in there that no strange man was allowed to see. And then he thought of Elizabeth. Elizabeth? My lord, if you can help me escape, what about the slave girl called Morningstar? Could you perhaps... He broke off. The chief black slave was looking horrified. Abraham, the slave girl Morningstar is now one of the sultan's four chief wives. Even now, she is expecting his child. What are you asking me to do? Uh, I didn't know. You, you never told me. But maybe, uh, uh, could I see her to s say goodbye? Oh, what a boy you are. Uh, uh, I'll see what I can do. The chief black slave was as good as his word. He acted as go-between with the Russians, fixing up all the arrangements. He even worked out a plan for helping Abraham to say goodbye to Elizabeth. I was thinking of just hurrying you through the forbidden palace disguised as one of the black slave guards who worked there. But if we're going to sp uh, spend longer speaking to Morningstar, one of them might recognize you. I've got a much better disguise. How would you like to be a girl for an hour or two? Abraham wrinkled up his face and then shrugged. All right, if you show me how to put the clothes on. The day of escape came. Abraham hadn't dared to tell Uncle Mustafa. Not because he thought the old man would give him away, but because he knew he would miss his nephew dreadfully. But he couldn't just sneak away without saying goodbye. It's my only chance, Uncle Mustafa, he said as the old man sat miserably with his head in his hands. I'll miss you too, Uncle Mustafa. I, 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 I'll always think of you, but, but I don't want to stay a slave all my life and never ever go outside these walls. And this way, at least, I have a chance of reaching the Sun King. Mustafa sighed. I can understand, but it doesn't make it any easier for me. 
they hugged each other tightly and said goodbye. Abraham had one last little important job to do, and after that he went with his cl closed basket to wait near the locked secret gate of the forbidden palace. It was nearly dark. After a little while, there was the sound of a key grating in the lock, and the chief black slave came out. Somehow he had arranged for all the guards of the secret gate to disappear for a few minutes. Checking carefully that no one was looking, he whisked Abraham inside the forbidden palace. There was another locked door, and another, and another, until they came to a horribly narrow, gloomy corridor with lots of little rooms opening off it. This is part of the black slave guards let live. Uh, and the chief black slave hurried Abraham through a little room, very richly furnished with fine carpets and cushions. And uh, here's your disguise, he said, handing Abraham a bundle of magnificent silks and velvets. You'd better keep your own clothes, too, to change into later. You can put them in that basket of yours. So Abraham changed into a fine slave girl's clothes. But there's so much to put on, he grumbled. What's it all for? There were baggy trousers of pale pink silk, and over them a long see-through embroidered dress, and then a long tight waistcoat with huge trailing sleeves, and on top of that a long bright coat and a scarf, and a little cap for his head, and a little curly toed slippers. The chief black slave grinned. Very nice. Your own mother wouldn't recognize you. I hope Elizabeth recognizes me, exclaimed Abraham. Otherwise, we'll be wasting all this effort. Don't worry, Abraham, replied the old slave. She has been warned. They set off through the rooms and courtyards of the Forbidden Palace. Straight away, Abraham could see black slave guards everywhere, standing by all the doors, and his stomach tightened with fear. But he tossed his long headscarf round his mouth and chin and not one of the guards looked at him twice. It was a magical place. The walls were bright with wonderful patterns of fruit and flowers and curly Arabic writing, all done in tiles of green and red and blue. Everywhere were windows and skylights of finely carved stone and wood and colored glass. Everywhere cushions and carpets patterned in rich reds and blues. Everywhere fountains and pillars, domes and arches. The air was full of perfume and the sound of bird song everywhere. There were cages with nightingales singing. There were girls and women everywhere, playing music, singing, combing their hair, smoking water pipes, doing embroidery, chatting. It was the strangest possible sight for Abraham, since he had hardly seen a woman or a girl since he had came to the Sultan's palace, and he had not seen a woman's bare face at all for two years, not since the slave market. Any woman who worked in the normal part of the palace or needed to pass through always had her face completely veiled, and here was room after room full of unveiled girls and women. At last they arrived at a small room. A fountain, set in one wall, was playing gently. This room was my idea, said the chief black slave. The noise of the water means we won't be overheard. On a raised part of the back of the room, sitting on a big cushion, sat Elizabeth, sewing. She looked up with a cry of, Abraham, quickly dropped her sewing and came over. She took Abraham's hands and said, in quite good Turkish, Oh, Abraham, it's lovely to see you, but how lucky you are to get away from all this. Uh, there are some good things here, mumbled Abraham. Some kind people. I've sort of got used to it, and I suppose you will too. The three of them went and sat at the cushions, and Elizabeth said, Tell me exactly how you've managed to escape, and all about where you're going. So Abraham explained why the chief black slave was helping him, and all about Peter Tolstoy and the great King Peter of Russia. She listened eagerly, and then said, Have you any heard my news? About the baby? Yes. Only two years had passed since Abraham had last seen Elizabeth, but she had aged much more than that. She really seemed grown up, not exactly happy, but very calm. If it's a boy, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure he grows up to be the next sultan. Then with me to give him ideas, 
we can make some changes here, lots of changes for the better. But there's something else, something wonderful. It didn't help me, but I am so happy about it. Yes. Abraham shook his head. I give up. When I saw that my lord the sultan was beginning to love me very much, I asked him if my brother and my father could be found and set free. Your friend, the chief black slave, helped to track them down. They are both back in England now. Elizabeth sighed. But I had to promise never to ask to be set free myself. What's that strange noise? Abraham listened. A thunder, maybe? But it wasn't thunder. It was a low, continuous drumming sound, getting louder and louder. The chief black slave stood up, listening. I'm afraid, my children. Uh, I'm very much afraid that... That what? burst out Elizabeth and Abraham together. Um, it's the white slave guards. They aren't satisfied with something. Their salaries or food or working hours. That sound is them beating on their food pots. It's their warning that they're going to go wild and rebel. The sultan himself could be in danger, madam. Drum, 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 drum. The drumming was getting louder and louder, nearer and nearer the palace, with blood-curdling yells and terrified screams every now and then. Outside the door was the sound of frightened shrieks and cries and whimpering, and little feet running this way and that, and the voices of the black slave guards rapid and worried. Madam, said the chief black slave, you are as safe here as you can be anywhere. Let me take this boy to the boat, and then I will come back to look after you. There's just one thing, Elizabeth, said Abraham hurriedly. I, I, I have a present for you, and for the baby, for the next sultan. Uh, she's called Lucky, and she'll bring you both luck. He rummaged under the boy's clothes, in the basket, and brought out the old tortoise. Here you are. She eats any green stuff, but she loves vine leaves best of all. Elizabeth stepped back a bit in alarm, but then took the scaly beast in both hands. Thank you, Abraham. She's lovely. Uh, welcome to the Forbidden Palace, Lucky. The drumming and yelling were getting louder every minute, and the chief black slave was getting more and more alarmed. Quickly, Abraham, we've no time to waste. The boatman may lose his nerve and go away. So Abraham and the old man ran through the rooms and corridors and little gardens of the Forbidden Palace, through the clusters of bewildered and panicking slave girls and guards, until they came to the big locked door. The chief black slave unlocked the rusty lock and then went through the damp and dusty rooms that hadn't been used for years, up steps and down steps through more locked doors and then across gardens and down and down and down until at last they came to a little door in a plain brick wall. The old man unlocked that with difficulty and there outside tossed the dark waters of the sea. Above and behind them they could hear the terrible din of the angry white slave guards Drum, 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 was at the gate of the Sultan's palace. Across the water they could see buildings on fire and hear the sounds of screams. Just below them, swaying with the waves, was a little light burning. And they could just see that it was on a boat, the bow of a small rowboat. The boatman had not let them down. Well done, my man said the chief black slave as he handed the shadowy figure a bag of money. There, there's more to come when I hear that you've finished the job. And the fat old man helped Abraham step across into the tossing, plunging little boat. Uh, goodbye, my boy. May it go well for you in Russia. You deserve to succeed. Uh, goodbye, called Abraham in the language of his homeland. Goodbye, and may God bless you always for what you've done. The boatman pushed the boat off with an oar and began to row across the choppy waters toward the lights of buildings and ships not far away. All around them the dark night was filled with the glowing of burning buildings, and the sounds of groans and yells, and the drum, 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 of the white slave guards beating, beating, beating on their food pots. And that's the end of chapter 9.